Todd Williams, the author of Rescue the Problem Project. So Todd, tell me why you wrote the book. I've been rescuing projects for somewhere around 25 years and I really enjoy writing and so I thought I would sit down and, and put something together and I kind of been toying for around it, uh, thinking about it for about uh, oh, two or three years and then I, I did break my back and, and it gave me the opportunity to, to do something instead of stare at the ceiling and not be able to do anything. So it gave me, gave me a chance. I put the whole thing together and once I had it all put together then I went out and tried to, to get it published and that was a, an education in its own. So what sort of stories went into the book? Well, with 25 years of rescuing projects around the world, there really is quite a bit you can talk about. So the book does have about 69 or so case studies and a variety of examples that are embedded in the book itself to kind of help you get uh, a feel for what it what it's like to actually rescue a project and I think there's a lot of value in those case studies themselves they've been uh, the names have been changed to protect the innocent um, and the guilty for that matter <coughs> we, we do protect both that, both sides of that and uh, it, it brings some real life to it it really I think helps uh, people understand what type of stuff goes on so what was your favorite project I don't know if I have a favorite project to actually rescue. There were some that were more challenging than others, and so if the challenge is what I was looking for, there's a, there was one that was running over in the Middle East that was extremely difficult and had many things to, to bring in to, to play that I wasn't expecting. Um, so how did you manage to turn that one around? Well, the big one was culture. I, I, the first thing I had to do is to understand culture. I just got through working a bunch in uh, on the Pacific Rim, and specifically in Taiwan and Singapore, and moving from there to all of a sudden working in the Middle East, which is a significant culture change, um, took a lot for me to actually adapt. And then I realized that as I was adapting to the, the difference in cultures, that that was probably what was really uh, affecting the entire project. And so. That was, that was the big key in that one and, and a, a huge learning point for myself. So talking of learning points, what would be your top tip for project managers facing failing projects? How can they turn their projects around? Listen. Listen. <laughs> listen, yes. Too many people don't listen. They, they jump too quickly to conclusions. Um, at first I thought that was just an American trait, U.S. trait, but it's, uh, it seems to be all over the world. People. People hear stuff. Uh, quite often, I'm sitting in a project and I'll hear two people talking to one another, and they're agreeing with one another like there's no tomorrow. They're just kind of, yeah, hey, that's exactly what I said. And I'll say, okay, now what I'm hearing you say is, and I'll replay it, and the one person says yes, and the other person says that isn't what we're going to do. Uh, so it's literally just backing away and listening and trying to remove yourself from the situation. Too many times you're sitting inside of a a situation and the culture actually makes us think we know something that we don't. Our biases turn around and, and turn around on us and make us. So what I want to use, uh, I guess, it's bias on on how the actual sentences are being said. You want the answer to come a certain way, and so you take what people say and turn it around to be that certain thing.